Hi guys, welcome to Finding Sanctuary. My name is Karen and I really am pleased that you're here at part seven in the series of my Oracle and Tarot deck collection where I show you all of my decks in full and I'm really enjoying it and I hope you are too. Now for more of the decks. Circles of Healing, Soul Activation and Radiant Manifestation throughout Sacred Words, Color and Mandala. This is a deck by Alana Fairchild and the art is by Beth Wilson. So it reads here, yes. Spiral into healing play with vibrant mandalas and visualizing language to activate enlightenment, healing, prosperity, protection and blessings. Create new soul patterns as you cycle into spiritual radiance and soul empowerment. The 44 circular affirmation cards of this gorgeous crafted deck combine phrase, color, symbolism and geometry to speak directly to your higher consciousness. Breathe, shuffle and affirm yourself into energetic renewal. And this is a really beautiful deck. I really do enjoy it. The only thing that um, I find a little bit challenging is the size of these cards to be able to shuffle them because as I've said many times I do have small hands but to be really honest the cards couldn't be any smaller or you definitely wouldn't get the feel and the energy and the detail within them that they really really need. So this is what they look like, they are absolutely gorgeous, they're vibrant, they're colourful, they're energetic, they really do speak to my soul like they say they will and I really do enjoy them. So we'll just take a moment and I'll pull one and see what it says. It has a little leaflet within it. It doesn't have a guidebook um, just before I pull the card. This is what it looks like. It explains how to use the cards and different things, but the cards themselves is pretty much all that you need to be able to get the message and run with it. So I'll give them a quick shuffle and we'll just see what card have the universe got for us all today. The Diamond Chakra. Wheel of Fate, signals time to realign and contemplate, balance attained, blessed outcomes ordained. What a beautiful card. And as you can see from the mandala, to me this one definitely looks like a wheel. We have the spokes of the wheel here holding it all together and we have this here which looks like a tire. And it really does feel like a wheel of fate, a beautiful wheel of fate. So I'll just show you some of the cards and read you a few of them as we go along. This one here, where does it start? Here it is. With patience and hope, Silver Shield blesses the soul with the wisdom of winter. Stillness and rest for sacred inner reorganization and success. And it definitely has that cool winter vibe to it. I enter the sacred solar mandala, receiving the nine rays of blessings, bathing my entire multidimensional being in divine radiance. So the messages are very beautiful as much as the mandalas are. It, they're, they're quite a beautiful deck to use. And one that I, I do find quite healing and uplifting. This one here. Through the trustworthy grace of divine timing, my soul blooms with and creativity expresses my unique destiny with love. I thrive in the new and unfamiliar, expanding the loving, expressive influence of my soul for the highest good. Really lovely deck, guys. So this one here is the Ancestor Spirit Oracle Cards by Jay Sky and illustrated by Belinda Morris. Now, this one I actually bought because I was really taken with the picture on the front cover here. There was just something about it that drew me in and really captured my attention. So this is what the back of the cards look like. The fire burning definitely feels like it's a reflection. So this is what the front of the cards look like. They're very beautiful. They've definitely got a real beautiful feel to them. So this is the card that was on the front of the cover that really captured my attention and I just felt really drawn to it. And I couldn't explain why, but it really just captured me and wouldn't let me go. But when I was going through the, the cards, I mean, they're all very beautiful and they have beautiful meanings and, and things to go along with them. But the one that I just stopped at when I got there, and I'll find it for you in a minute, and it just really, it stopped me in my track and it just felt so emotional. And it just really made me feel connected to the land that I live in, which is something that I do struggle with at times, being in the Southern Hemisphere, and most of my ancestors come from the Northern Hemisphere. I struggle with the fact that I don't feel like I'm aligned with this side of the world and the seasons. And it's something I've struggled with for a really, really long time. But when I found this card, tune in and connect, non-verbal communication, the intuition and messages. When I seen this card, I just knew that I was home. I felt a connection with the land that I'd never really felt before and I found it a really, really beautiful experience.
So a really great deck. So the next deck that I have is Beyond Lemuria. I hope I've pronounced that right by Izzy Ivy and it is a beautiful deck. So I'll read this for you. New earth codes and wisdom for our ancient future. Transform shadow into light, bridge duality and inspire heaven on earth through the practical and enlightening insight from Lemuria. Recall the past and glimpse of future, expand your conscious awareness and behold the wonders of the greater world. This uniquely stunning deck from artist and author Izzy Ivy is infused with loving guidance, greater knowledge and encoded symbols to enliven the truth in you with the majesty of the universe. Fusing childlike innocence with all-knowing depth and strength in her characters, Izzy Ivy combines art with the spirit that dances her. Every image is seeded with subtle symbolism for the collective dreaming and keys to a deeper recall. Meet the Lemurians, connect with the energy and work with the macro microcosm to reclaim wholeness and step into your light. It's time for the remembering, it's time to go beyond Lemuria. Now this is a really stunning deck. I bought it because I was drawn to the artwork of Izzy. I really like her style. I felt that it had a lot of different messages to give and I'm really looking forward to getting them. Now I have had this deck for quite some time and I did work with it for a bit, but I have to be honest, I didn't work with the guidebook so much, but I know that the messages that are here for me really need to be um, heard from the guidebook so that I can really understand their language and what it is they wish to tell me. But a really beautiful deck. So the next one I have is Ask Your Angel, Oracle, Cards, Guidebook and Angel Directory and it is a Tony Carmine Salerno deck and I've had this for quite some time. It is that beautiful purple colour that I really, really gravitate towards and love and this is what the front of the cards look like. It is Tony's artwork and I do have quite a few of his decks because as you know I do like them. Um, I find it really interesting. So this has a really different feel. It's a deck that I don't tend to pull out very often anymore. I used to when I first got it 10, 10 years or more ago, but I definitely don't gravitate towards it as much these days. But Angels is something I don't gravitate towards as much these days. So it's got nothing to do with the deck itself. I think it's just the fact that my needs have changed and the way that I interact with the cards has changed. And once where I would have felt called to pick up an angel deck and use them, because I've got quite a lot of them in my collection, isn't something that I'm called to as much nowadays. Here we have the Universal Celtic Tarot by La Scarabeo. It is a gorgeous little deck and I really love it. It has this little guidebook. I find it quite tricky to read. It's in more than one language and I really do struggle to read it, but it's there. So what I like about this deck is it speaks to my Celtic heritage, which is something that I do like tapping into. I like the fact that the deck is very small, it's portable, I can take it wherever I am, I can always have it on me. The colours in the pictures are very vibrant, the pictures themselves are full of detail and they're very expressive. And the energy that this deck brings is, is one of connection and fun. I really do enjoy using it and I love having it in my collection. Mini decks are something I only have, I think, two of, but I would love to have a few more of them. So next I have the Southern Gothic Oracle. Now, I absolutely love the artwork in this deck. It is the reason why I purchased it, to be honest. Um, and I really, I really do appreciate it. So this is what the guidebook looks like. There's a lot of good information in there, which for me, it is a guidebook that I read from start to finish. And it is one that when I pull a card, I am picking up and using all the time. Um, Stacey Williams Ong, as you'll see in a minute, her artwork is incredible. So this is what the cards look like. I absolutely love the artwork in them. I love the colours. I love everything about these cards. I even love the borders and the way she's written the, the message down the bottom. They really do appeal to me. And the feel of the cards, they are just luxurious. They're just absolutely gorgeous. But the one thing that I really struggle with, and it's absolutely nothing to do with Stacey's um, work or the deck itself, is just my own connection to Southern Gothic. I don't understand it, it's very foreign to me and it's not something that I was able to link into very easily. There's glimpses of it that I understand that you know I've been exposed to in, in different um, times and spaces but for the majority of it, it really is something that is so far away from my normal experience that I really do struggle to, to connect with the deck and use it in a way that really makes sense to me, which is an absolute shame. She does have another deck and she had an expansion for this, which I would love to get, 
but the cost of getting it to Australia was quite exorbitant and the fact that I I couldn't couldn't work with this deck and it just didn't work for me is a reason why I didn't get the expansion um, and it really disappoints me that I can't connect with this deck because it's got so much to offer um, it is one that I purchased off Kickstarter and I do love it I do love it and I, I've got to find a different way to be able to use it um, but using it for the purpose yeah it just doesn't work for me and that is a real shame so the next deck I have is Raise Your Vibration Oracle by Kyle Gray. Now this is a deck that I picked up um, not so long ago. It hasn't been released for very long. This is what the back of the deck looks like and this is what the front of the deck looks like and it just, <laughs> I just love it. I have a few decks like Gabby Bernstein's decks that predominantly have messages on them and even though I tell myself that I don't like that, I really do like that, I've learnt. Um, I love the messages, I love the fact that the messages are the, the key components in these cards and they're what stand out for me. And I think that comes with the fact that I love to write. I love the written word, I, I take it very seriously, I love things that are descriptive and I just, I love messages. So I do love these cards and I get a lot out of it. So I'll just pull a card for us today to see how we can raise our vibration and just see what the universe says for us all so we'll turn this one over here i am filled by love so we can raise our vibration by filling up with love what a beautiful message Next up, I have the Crystal Mandala Activation Cards by Alana Fairchild. Now on the back here, it says, Illuminate, re-energize, and step into the beauty of your soul's true path today. Channel the divine power of heaven and earth with this pocket-sized, travel-friendly affirmation deck inspired by the best-selling Crystal Mandala Oracle. Alchemical affirmations are trip-switch transmissions of light that will connect you to the high vibration of angels, ascended masters, and goddesses. Receive loving crystalline codes straight into your body, mind and soul and empower your soul path through the stunning mandala art of Jane Marin and the inspired guidance of Alina Fairchild. So these are the cards as you can see. They've got beautiful crystals on the front here. I really do love them. They're very colourful. They're very engaging. And if we turn one of the cards over, we can see this one says Archangel Anil and Pink Calcite acceptance. Acceptance is my pathway to transformation. Acceptance allows me to see the clarity and make choices that are wise, effective and healing. I choose to grow through my experiences, trusting in the blessings revealed according to divine timing and higher wisdom. As I acknowledge what is, I become capable of attracting inspired solutions that rapidly advance my spiritual empowerment. I now attain higher understanding and access the practical wisdom within, finding the best way forward. So they're really beautiful messages. I do have a full video um, around this deck. If you're interested, you can have a look. I'll link in the description below. So next we have the Leaves of Wisdom, Soulful Reflections by Walt Whitmore. This is a beautiful deck. It's just cards. We've got a lot of Lucy Cavendish's decks that are very similar. So this is the back of the cards, very beautiful. And these are the fronts. They all have their own message for you. I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. So really great messages. I really do enjoy them. So this is one I got for Christmas 2022, Oracle of the Roses by Sherilyn Darcy. It is a really new deck. I really do love it. The backs are gorgeous and the fronts, I love the vintage feel to it. I love the, the whole roses thing. It's not something I probably would have picked for myself, but it really resonates with me and I'm really happy to have it and can't wait to work with it in the future. Now this one is Crystal Medicine Oracle by Rochelle Charman. And when we open it up, it is one of the few decks that I have that has round cards. And this is what they look like. So again, shuffling them, they're a bit smaller than the other round deck that I have, but shuffling them can be quite challenging. But I do like the round card. So here we have Truth and Integrity, Turquoise, Summer, and a number 32. Here we have Self-Expression, Water, 
Larimar and 26. Self Mastery, Spider, Topaz, 27. And they're just really beautiful cards. Moving forward, Seraphonite, Air and 19. It's really gorgeous cards. So this is the guidebook that goes with the cards. It's quite detailed. It gives you a full picture of the card and then it gives you the information. So here we have the Oracle message. We have the medicine, which is that it gives us. We have the crystal and then we have a ceremony. So it tells you that for each of the cards, which is a really great way. I like using the ceremonies with the cards. I find them quite interesting, but I don't always do them. So this deck is Guardian Angel Messages Tarot by Radley Valentine. It's one of only two decks I have of Radley's and then I have one, I think, with Dorian Virtue. So this is a lovely deck. This is the back of the cards and this is the front of the cards. So there's just something about this deck. I can't really pinpoint what it is, but I, I feel like it's it's... It's a lovely deck. It feels quite, even though some of the things don't look like it, it, it feels like quite a fun, upbeat deck to me. And it just feels like it. it's just got a level of um, angelicness to it, obviously. Guardian Angels, I feel very protected. The energy feels very protected. It feels very loving. And that's what I do like about this. It has a similar energy for me personally to the um, Angel Tarot that he did with... Doreen Virtue that I also have. So this is Courtney Davis's The Celtic Tarot. I've had this for a really long time. It's actually one of the very first tarot decks that I ever got and I've used it quite a lot and I got a Celtic one because that is my heritage. So oh, I even got even got bits and pieces in the back here guys. So the guidebook is it's quite um, robust. It's got a lot of information in here, which is really great. So this is the back of the cards, and this is the front of the cards. It's definitely got that Celtic feel to it. It's one that I really enjoy using. It has the pips for the Minor Arcana, which is the first way that I ever learnt to read tarot cards, was with pips, and I do enjoy that. Next we have Angels, God and Goddesses. This is another deck by Tony Carmine Salerno. And again, this is the back of the cards. And this is the front of the cards. They're very beautiful. They're easy to read with. They have an upbeat energy. Tony's artwork, it really does appeal to me. That's why I have quite a number of his decks. And the messages that go with the cards are, are really lovely too. So it is a deck that I will often use as a secondary deck when I'm doing a reading. Um, and funnily enough, Angels, Gods and Goddesses, I still do call for this deck and pull it out and use it. Um, even though a lot of my Angel decks I don't use anymore. So there you have it guys, that's the last deck in part 7 of this series, part 8 will be coming shortly. I just wanted to give a shout out, if you have watched to the end of this video, thank you so much. If this is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7 in the series that you've sat down and spent time with, I really do appreciate that you keep coming back and that I really hope that you found some kind of value in being able to see my cards in this experience we've shared together. So until part 8, take care and I'll see you then.